Hey everybody out there in TV land. Last week was kind of a disaster on this project. I'll go ahead and tell you that that, if you watch the rest of the end of that video and I didn't have a lot of detail, I realized at the end of the video because I had the company coming over, but uh, I don't remember if I showed you this, uh, I think I did, but when I went to put this on, and thanks for the comments, a few people gave me some good ideas here, which I knew that probably might or might not work because it was really close. But what happened is these holes in this chuck were still too close together and they won't go in this face plate on this rotor table. Even though I ground a kind of a radius on the end of this and put it in there, it lacks about a sixteenth of an inch and it's just not a good idea anyway because like one of the comments said, and I already knew this, I was just going to tinker around and see how it worked out, but uh, that doesn't really locate you just to the center of this rotary table's rotation or any of that, and I knew that. I was just wanted to see if I could get it mounted on there, and then we would go from there by probably extruding a little hub for this to sit. I, anyway, none of that worked. And I'm not going to bore you with a lot of detail real quick. Try not to try to keep this as short as possible. But one thing also this week, I've had a buddy come over that was a machinist here locally, but he kind of a younger guy, younger than me anyway, but he, he uh, he's kind of changed jobs and he's doing some fabrication. He's a good welder and, and machinist. Does uh, quite a bit of work for a race car company that uh, does some uh, several different projects, but they built some go kart frames and, and some full blown dragsters. Uh, you know, the guy that runs the company, uh, it's kind of a hobby company, but uh, he's a full time machinist for an aircraft company. I'm not a machinist, but a welder for an aircraft company, and uh, that's his background. He does fabrication work, and he's a good friend of mine. And, He's been coming over here using some of my machines a little bit and uh, just kind of helping me with some ideas here too. Uh, he's going to probably come and be a guest on our video series here, possibly this evening or tomorrow or maybe during the week. We don't know yet how his schedule is going to work out, but I just wanted to update you on what's going on with this project today on this Saturday afternoon. It's finally warm enough here. It's 70 degrees out here roughly. Shop doors open. And I've got still got mechanic work to do that I'm working on too. I've got a few problems there I'm working through but I've done some measurements and I'll bring you in here close. I've got a drawing that we just kind of a rough quick drawing just to give me some ideas here or some measurements and dimensions so I don't forget what's going on here in case this gets drawn out a little bit. But I'll show you the drawing we're going to do and some ideas I've got to do here. And I had this piece of plate I was going to make a mini pallet on the rotary table with at some point like uh, Mr. Lee Pragmatic had done. Uh, I've got a few pieces of aluminum to do things like that. I think I'm going to use this. This is three quarter and it ends up being eight and a half by nine inches. So I think I'm gonna have to saw this off to be about an eight inch by eight inch square. What we're trying to cover is close to eight inches. This is a metric number and I don't remember what it is, but it's slightly less than eight inches, just about, I don't remember, say 15 or 20 thousandths under. I, it doesn't have to be exact anyway. This is just to hold this chuck. But, like one guy had suggested and I had thought about as well, I just was trying a few things here. I'll bring you up close, but we're going to have to locate to the chuck and locate to the rotary table so that anytime we remove this and put it back, you know, if it has an extruded hub into this, that locates straight into the rotary table and then have an extruded hub that locates right into the chuck and you just throw it on there with a good fit and you're Damn, you're done. If you need, I may not even take the chuck off of this. I don't know where, it's a big chuck. 
if I don't want to deal with the chuck, I just want to deal with clamping something straight to this or even have a little vise that goes under here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't, I'm still waiting on that mill. By the way, the tracking on that ship from Asia that's coming with that new mill, I uh, saw yesterday morning it finally had cleared the Panama Canal. Uh, they've been on the water since early January, I think the 5th of January, when they left about the Japan area. They've probably been on the water making a few pickups along Asia. Probably a week or two or three weeks before that. I don't know when they started their journey, but that's got to be a long journey. They got to the Panama Canal, I think, about Wednesday, so they've been on the water for a couple weeks or something. Whatever. They a couple days to get through the Panama Canal. Cleared the Panama yesterday morning and lost connection again, so we don't get any more tracking on that ship. It's an OOCL cargo ship called Chongqing. Um, they're heading towards Jamaica area with that ship, and I think they're coming up into New York Harbor, and I'm expecting it to be another week to 10 days at least before they even get into that harbor and probably have to go through customs. And I'm not worried about them too much. It's just interesting to watch that a little bit because Matt at uh, Precision Matthews has given me that uh, ship that it's on, and uh, it's a little bit interesting to watch that. But, Try not to be too anxious. I'm not ready for the mill anyway. Got a lot of stuff to get done out of here, but I'm just preparing for the mill, like this video series is called, since prepping for the mill. I'm just gonna get the rotary table kind of set up to do a few things in case we want to use it when we do get the mill. But I'm gonna I think our first part of this procedure is gonna be to get this thing cut down to a, a square eight and a half by eight and a half, I mean eight inch by eight inch or thereabouts, maybe a little bit of, leave a little bit of stock on this. And uh, then we'll put it in the four jaw on the lathe. And I watched some uh, A-bombs videos this morning and a few others about how to set this up in the four jaw. And I think I'm figured out, because this is a really bad interrupted cut. This is gonna end up round. I guess it doesn't have to, but I think it looks pretty stupid with square points sticking out of this. So, yeah, I think I'll turn this. This is what's going to happen on the lathe. We're going to turn it down to an extruded hub. This is roughly three quarters thick, so it'll end up half inch thick if we leave a one eighth extrusion on each side to go into these places that we can uh, get up to on the on the rotary table and the chuck. So I'll probably bring you back in in a minute or when I get next, get started on this. I've still got some things to do today. That I'm not really on this project all day, maybe tomorrow too. It's not that big a project, but it will take some time and I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. I'm probably gonna just bring you in and out. And if Hall shows up, my buddy that's uh, gonna help me with this, I'd like to get him in some videos because he's kind of partnering up with me on some uh, some ideas and maybe some ventures here in the shop in the next several years to come. So uh, this is going to be a growing machine stuff here in the shop in the next several years as we can afford to put more machines and put more time into this. Remember, I work full time. I'm not a machinist. I'm a mechanic at, at a school district here and uh, retired from Ford, working on Ford Motor Company vehicles for over 20 years in a dealer. Most of you already know that, but I'm working towards the next 20 years, working towards my retirement age, hopefully having this shop built up to machine shop, fabrication shop, whatever, and you know, we fix and repair anything pretty much here, so that's what we're working towards. It's gonna to be a slow process, and we're gonna eventually have quite a bit of machinery in here, I hope, and build on the shop. You know, there'll be surface grinding, eventually surface grinding material. Uh, machinery and probably CNC machinery of some kind at some point within the next 10 years. 
and we'll see what happens there. I'm not going to sit around and talk all day, I hope, because my videos turn out to be way longer than I plan on. And I'm just updating you on where we came from last week, which was really just starting this series. This could be a several part series, I don't know. I'd like to get these videos down to 30 minutes if possible, or less. And maybe I can just bring it in and out and show you a little bit of progress as we move along with this. I'm not against showing you any failures. I'm not by any means sure how this is gonna turn out. I think it's gonna turn out fine with this interrupted cut. We'll just take it easy. And uh, I might even work on getting this round a little bit. I doubt it, because what we'll probably do is go about halfway and flip it over and do the other half as we move into these extrusions. One extrusion here, I assume this is called extrusion. This is where that fits into this chuck, but that's about 2.950 in this hole. Let me get you up here and show you up close. Show you this little drawing in this, and then I'll, I'll cut out of here, and then we'll set up on the bandsaw for the next part of this. All right, without moving you around too much, I hope. Here's the little drawing my son helped me do. He's an AutoCAD guy on the, at, for his main job at work. But uh, this is just our uh, rotary table chuck adapter. So. Well, right here is just uh, pretty slow moving, getting the bandsaw set up. When I first got it sawing, remember that's an eight, uh, eight inch, well it was nine and a half inches wide and I was just wanting to saw it off so it was eight inches by eight inches. But, you know, it's laying down flat and it was taking a long time to saw and Took me a while to realize that the throat on it wasn't set deep enough to clear the material, so I only started sawing and then it stopped sawing because it was kind of resting against the, kind of a guard there where you can adjust the throat of that, but that's why I'm moving this. I think this is about four times the speed here. And it was about 10 o'clock at night and I was really tired, but uh, no reason to watch all of this too much. Just uh, skip through this if you want. Uh, just sawing that material. I think that's where I finally got it set. But it did take a while to saw through that long three-quarter piece that saw that's the blade that came on this saw and uh, hadn't decided yet if I want to leave it on there or get a new blade I think I heard that you could buy a Starrett or a Linux blade It'd make a lot of difference with that saw it's a pretty good saw I'm happy enough with it but just hadn't used it at all really, I just cut that one little piece of material last week to make that uh, T-nut, which wasn't nothing, but these long saws took a little bit longer, but when I got done with it, it did make a decent, uh, pretty decent cut, anyway that's all there is to this. Well, here's some more long, boring video footage that I really need to speed up. If I haven't already, I'll try to work on that, I guess. But um, I was just drilling a really a center hole in both sides of this plate, talking my way through it as usual, just taking forever and. Uh, 
all it really amounted to is I just took a thing of number two center drill and drilled through that side and then I put a about a number 30 drill bit through it so I could find it on the other side and drilled another center on the other side that way I could locate it in the lathe and uh, get it centered up in the four jaw chuck later on so that's all there really is to this so uh, I wouldn't spend too much time watching this old goofball drill hole so anyway sorry this video's turned out so sloppy I'm just Seems like I ain't had a whole lot of time to put it together. I'll just show you what all happened and you can laugh at my terrible, terrible video making if you wish, but this is just some content I had put together over the weekend. I'm sure you can tell I'm pretty tired tonight too. Editing this video. Sound like a drunk on the video and the, and the editing voiceover. Anyway, see what you can make with it. me trying a little camera angle I've never tried before but let me try to get I don't know I think we've got enough light on the subject for right now the sun's probably going down I got the door open even though it's a little cool in here not cold or nothing but it's starting to cool off I was going to close the door but I'm trying to remember something that Adam Booth had I watched a video on him the other day. And I think the, what it was, to make this easier, you can take, I got this egg te Edge Technologies deal like you've seen a lot of guys, uh, Mr. Pete, uh, Mr. Pragmatic Lee, and even Harold on Amateur Redneck Workshop has kind of duplicated something similar to this. I've had this one for, I don't know, about a year or so maybe. And it's, it's pretty decent. This is just a really big workpiece for this small. This is just a 13 by 40 lathe. But I think Adam had showed a few things, but I believe the video was back from 2013. Uh, probably be hard to find it if you want to see it. It's pretty neat, but I know you probably can't see this real well, but one thing he was saying, and even Joe Pye had something similar on Everybody that I saw this was talking about a little, but it was a small, maybe a two inch square piece. They was just showing how to get it centered in the four jaw. But, and all I've done is stuck this in there. I don't have any idea how close it is. In fact, I 
could turn this to see what it looks like. I'm sure it's way off because all I did is kind of eyeball center, but you can see it's way off. So one thing you have to do is, for one thing, you'll check the face to see if, how it's running out. And also we want to get, really the sides of this don't matter that much. What we want to do is get this hole here centered up as our axis. And we're going to cut this to round, but mainly we're going to come in and make a hub right there. So I think the best way is to not worry about this. Well, you, we can use this maybe, but I think what I saw him do, and this is going by memory, I, I did watch this yesterday morning, but I've never done anything like I think what he did was put this in here, and I've got you on the tailstock, so I'm going to have to wiggle you around, but just to show you what it's going to happen. See, this has a center in this dead center and here's a live center that you put up to it so we're going to trail it like this and um let's just see what happens here i haven't ever tried this excuse me while i bump this in here uh i'm going to wiggle the camera a little bit boy that's really wiggling isn't it? all right now i'm going to bring you up here because you're on the tailstock and you may end up getting so close to this, it's not going to work too good, but let me move this light out of your way. Let's see how close. I may have to move the camera. Uh, I'll just go ahead and move the camera right now. And let's see if I can get you in a better spot. I just don't want it shaking the camera when we... That's an awful looking... <laughs> I should have got you on here different to start with. I just thought that would work. But let's put you here and then roll you up here where you're almost looking level. Point you down so you can kind of see. This monitor I'm looking at is pretty blurry, but I, I think the camera's clear. All right. So basically we're gonna move this up here I don't know exactly where I need the carriage right now, but let's just move this tail stock up here. Okay, well, that's shaking the heck out of you, isn't it? All right, so now we're against that, and let me tighten the, let me get as least the amount I can stuck out of the, the quill on the tail stock so it's a little more rigid. Have you ever seen this done? I, I never had, but I guess, but. Let's just, I'm gonna snug that down just a little. Okay, and we'll have to go back and forth on this. But, you can see, well, that is just gonna shake you all over, isn't it? Let me get you, I was gonna do this a different way, but I decided to, let's try this first. So, uh, I'm going to get this dial indicator kind of up here in about the middle of its stroke if I can. And let's uh, snug it down. I doubt you can see that dial worth a flip right there. It's not real important. I was mainly showing you the direction I'm going to go here. Um, it'd be better if I could get you up there where you could see it, but I don't know how do that anyway let's try this for a minute and see how this how far we're out here of course I want to be up here as far as I can to see how much run out we got on that now right now we're trying to get it centered this way and not worry about the face of it right now after you get that set then we can work the face you'll have to go back and forth several times and I won't bore you with all that I'm just showing you the direction I'm going with this. It's not out as far as I thought. It's about, let's see. There's 25 that way. There's 30, 35, 40. We're only about 42 thousandths off. That's surprising me. So, so let's see. 
We want to work our low spot from this side, so let's get that's that's the low spot right there. So what we need to do is loosen this one up just a little, tighten this one up. I think I just went the wrong direction for some reason. Let's see. Yeah, this gauge reads backwards from what I was thinking it did. So this is the high, so where's the, let's find the low. No, it's not. That's the high, meaning it's pushing it this way, too far, so we need to go back that way with it. So let's loosen this one and push in on that direction right now. We gotta go a pretty good way, so. Needs to go that direction. Need to loosen that one. Tighten this one. This is harder to do on camera than what it is in real life. I don't think straight on camera. Okay, there's the low, meaning that uh, it's that way too far. So need to come this way. So let's loosen this a little. Tighten this one. See where we're at now. We're getting a lot closer. I don't know if you're seeing that needle. There's our low. So we need to loosen that one and tighten that one. Now let's see where we're at. Okay. There's our high. Means it's this way too far. So we need to loosen this one and tighten this one. Now let's see where we're at. Okay, now there's our low. So let's tighten this one. There's our high. And here's our low, so let's loosen this one and tighten this one. I'm not going to win any four jaw competition like this. Now let's see where we're at. Anyway, that's the way I'm going to work this back and forth for a minute, and I'm going to get you off of here so I can think straight, and I'll bring you back in a minute, and we'll keep, we'll see if we can get this thing running true here in a minute, and I'll come back when we're doing the face out here in a minute. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, I don't know how great this camera angle is. Probably not very. I'll turn this light off. I think it's worse. I can't tell if that's focused or not on this crazy monitor, but you get the idea. We're trying. I got that centered in here. That other method, you know, we were doing with on here. Now let's check the face and see how far we're off with the face. And we'll probably have to peck it around a little bit. Get our 
Indicator back out of the way. There we go. Okay. Now we really don't need this set up in here anymore, so oh, let's loosen that off. Back, back this. All right, here we are. This is a heck of an interrupted cut here, and I may break a tool or something. I might, actually, I can't even get, I don't think I can get where I need to be here. Huh, didn't think about that. You see there, I can't even get, I may have to use a different tool. I wonder, I didn't think about that problem. This is such a large workpiece here that I don't know how I'm gonna get in there on that. I wonder if I turn this around. I mean, these are the things that you ever try to do a big piece like this on a pretty small mill, a lathe, just a 13 inch lathe. Uh, you're gonna run into crazy stuff. I just see I can get to it here, but I don't know how that's gonna do on all my. You know I don't know how that'll work out. Let's see, that right there's as far out as I can get. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I can try it. I don't know if it'll chatter or what'll happen. Let's tighten this up. All right, we're at a weird angle, and I don't know. I'm not sure you can see. I'm gonna move you up here. See. I don't know if that's too. Oh, sorry. I just got the camera loose. I want to get to where you can see the cutting action here. I don't know if the light is too bright, or if we need it or not. What camera just keeps on falling there, doesn't it? And it's probably gonna shake. Well, let's try this and see what happens. See, that still ain't gonna reach the outside edges of that, is it? I wonder if I should have cut them off. I could turn that and mark where we're gonna be. I wanna turn this down pretty low, because this is crazy swinging that kind of deal in here. You wanna just mark that and we'll see where our well, that don't mean that's where our eight inch is gonna be, is it? If we were right on the edge of that, look oh, at that thing. Looks like that's not running true, and it was. Hmm. Well, you see what difficulties we're having. Let me bring you back when I check a few things here and I'll see what's going on.
on. I want to make a little cut there to give me a little bit of stock to left a little stock there. We want to finish out somewhere around 2.950. I think I left about 150,000 there. Extra. So we can come in and make sure that we don't go overshooting. Well, it's the The thing is, I had to have that thing kicked around, remember? So now I've got a taper, but I still have a little extra stock here. I'm going to try to see if I can just barely touch that and blend that in. I just can't, with this small of a lathe, I just can't quite seem to get it in there. Yeah, I'm at about three inches. and Remember, we needed... Uh, about 2.950, so we got about 50 thousandths to play with. I'd like to true this up. I've got this running true. I'm going to see if I can get this uh, to go in there without hitting. I think I can. Let's see if I can touch this. I really don't want to touch it. I like that finish that's on it. It's pretty nice. I just want to see if I get up here. I think I have this. No, I don't have that set now. I may have to make one more pass like this, but I don't know if I can get there. Let's see if this will get there. Remember, we only need eight inches, but see, I can't get any more than that right there, so. I guess I'm just going to have to sneak in there and just barely touch that and see if I can true that up to the right size here. We're out of time pretty much on this video. I'm just trying to finish up for the week here. I'll say goodbye. I'm going to barely, barely touch that, hopefully. See if I can just true this up. I don't know if you can see from there, but that's got a bevel on it where I had that kicked out earlier. So let's try this, see what happens here. Gosh, this thing's shaking like crazy. Let me hold you. Let's see if I can hold you still.
we got this turned down pretty decent. It's a pretty nice finish here. Uh, but, you know, we were going for 2.950 and I got tired and stupid and so I got this down about a hundred thousandths too small. So, I thought it was an awful lot, but I was taking off, I thought I was taking diameter, but I was actually taking radius off. I just completely lost my thinking there for a minute. So, um, what we'll do is we'll turn this one down next week for the next week's video to this little one here. And can, we can just make the bigger one for the other side when we flip it over. That's no, no big problem. I had already thought about that. If I screw up on this one, that's okay because we still got to come down to 1.182 for the part that goes into the uh, rotary table. And really, it might be best anyway. I've got to thinking about that. Let's just talk about this a minute. Let me move you over here and I'll tell you something that I just got to thinking about. It might be best to wait until we get the milling table, but I would like to get this project over with. But we'll look into this. What might be better to do here is go ahead and get that plate mounted into this hole, which is the one we can turn that down to that. Uh, that's 1.182. I've got that written right there anyway and get this thing mounted down on this rotary table, bolted in. Then I might ought to go check my little mill and see if it's true enough. If the head is trammed in flat and I can trust it, I might could just take and make sure that surface of that other side is really true. And it might be best if I just used a mill. I've got a surface, uh, a face mill and do that work on here that way this thing is really true to the surface of of the table of the mill uh, because just because you turn that on the lathe don't mean and you flip it over and all that you there's a good chance it's not going to be true to the to the table or to this so we may do that at least we can turn that down and get this mounted on here See what we think about it then next week. So uh, anyway, I appreciate y'all watching this. I know it's probably hard to watch somebody like me that just kind of figuring it out as I go. And uh, I kind of have a feeling what I'm doing. I mean, I, I'm not completely stupid, but I don't have any experience doing this stuff either. So. I just watch videos and it looks simple on videos. You know, everything looks like it's easy. Watching Adam Booth or uh, a lot of other guys that, you know, do this stuff, it looks simple. And I understand everything they're doing. I understand exactly how to do it. It's just that if you don't have the experience and you don't have the really very good machines, like I don't, uh, see, this this lathe is really a little small for what I'm trying to do here, and I'm just trying to make it work. It's kind of like me watching these people with these little mini lathes or these little atlas lathes, and I'm always like, my gosh, how in the world can them guys stand to use them little machines? And here I am running into the same situation. This one's just not big enough because this cross slide here just doesn't have enough travel for what I'm trying to do. The, the lathe could handle it if I just had a little more travel on here, but, and there may be ways to modify this, I don't know, to, to make that happen in the future. I don't know if that's worth tackling, but anyway, I better get in there and get busy. I sure do appreciate you watching and subscribing and all the new subscribers, if you'll hang in here with us, I think together we can uh, come up with uh, suggestions for each other. And uh, uh, I do appreciate the suggestions and com comments either way. And uh, this is all just a hobby. This ain't nothing that matters. <laughs> anyway, y'all uh, take care and have a good week. See you next time.